Hey everyone, welcome back to the Art to Life podcast. Uh, excited to dive in to questions around selling art and scaling your business and getting things kind of going. Um, uh, the other day on Instagram, uh, I thought, oh, you know, one of the things that's been most helpful for me is getting someone to help me because I quickly realized that shooting all my own art, making all my own art, doing everything myself only can take you so far. And I never had enough time to do all the things, to, to make enough art. I, I, I missed it as, as I got, you know, it's like we got to promote it on social media. We have to photograph the art. We have to describe the art. We have to get the materials. We have to throw the garbage away from the studio. We got to clean up the studio. That's just around the art thing, not to mention the rest of your life. So it can get kind of crazy. And what happens, unfortunately, is as your life gets more full, the thing that you love doing gets pushed to the side and things that are more pressing, um, more pedestrian, less inspiring, uh, grow. And, and that gives you less energy. And then you have less energy to do the thing. And then you do less and less, and it's just this vicious cycle. So, you know, somewhere along the line, I realized I, I need to get someone to help, just a little bit, just someone who could help me in the studio, somebody who could, um, uh, you know, help me photograph my art or help me stretch canvases or come in and clean the studio or, uh, you know, post things on social media, whatever the things are, but I never, I waited way too long to do this. Um, and I just thought I could do everything myself. And, and I did for a lot of years and I just stayed, I just kind of was stuck in, in this place. I, at some point I figured out that I needed to get someone to help and I needed to pay them and I never could justify it because I can do it myself. I'm not gonna pay somebody to do something. I'm not like, flush with money, I need to, you know, I need to save money, I need to make art and the whole thing, but it's this vicious cycle. And, and so I started looking at my work, uh, my artwork, which has always just been like a spiritual journey for me. It's super pure, I love doing it. And I know for many of you listening, you're the same. And it's awkward and, and mm, feels cold a little calculating to put, monetary fixation, monetary um, numbers, uh, pricing on something that comes from the heart. But if you are living in this world and you, you wanna make more art and you do need to make money from your art, and I'm not saying you need to, and most people, many people perhaps have other ways to support themselves. And this is just a kind of a fun, cool thing you get to do. And that's, that's the best, that's awesome. But for me and some others I know, they need to at least pay for their art materials, right? They need to generate money to pay for that studio, to do those shows, right? So this is kind of for you guys, although there's much in here that relates to anybody making art. Um, so here's what I explained in this, you know, two minute uh, Instagram post, I basically said you need to figure out how much money you're making when you make your art. And this is for anybody at any stage, whether you sell one painting every month or zero paintings, right? If you're just getting going, eventually you need to sell the work. And it starts with friends, um, it starts with open studios, it starts with galleries, all of these things become more and more, there's more and more opportunities. You start posting on Instagram, um, people ask, they see something they've, you've made and they want, they want it and they'll say, can I buy this? And you'll sell it to them. And so as you do this more, there's more and more opportunity to sell your work. But the basic idea is that you start tracking how long it takes you to make your work. Um, and I do it, but paint, you know, take six months, take two months and, and write down, just track it. It doesn't, you don't have to be fast. You, you can be slow, fast, it doesn't matter. But, um, and for me, it's, it varies. Sometimes I can make a painting in three hours. Sometimes it takes me 18 hours. It just really depends. But 
If you make 10 things, you're gonna come up with a kind of general number, an average of how long these paintings take, which is really interesting, but you're gonna get a total number of hours. So say it's 100 hours to make 10 paintings. And you take over the next two months or three months or six months, whatever time frame you choose, you, you track how many you sell. Right, and if you sell one and you sell it for $1,000 and you spend 100 hours making 10 paintings and you've sold one, and I know that you probably will sell more in the future, but just, just for this exercise, um, you're making like $10 an hour, um, which is not horrible for doing something you love. You're actually making something for it. But you'll see if you sell a few, which doesn't take much, two paintings, three paintings, you're starting to make 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 dollars an hour doing something you love and, and that has um, a value and you're generating money from doing this. And if you're making 50 dollars an hour, how I like to think about it, that's what you're going to make when you make your art. That's when you go to the studio and you're kind of focused and you, you make art. And if you're making $50 an hour, um, I was always prepared to spend half of that getting someone to help me. Because if I pay someone $25 an hour, that gives me another hour that I can make $50 an hour. I mean, it's literally, you know, you're trading your time for money. You're, you're buying some of your time back. Um, there's a link in the show notes to um, one of my coaches, an amazing uh, business person, Dan Martell. He's got a book called Buy Back Your Time, and it goes way into this. It's for business, and which art is also. But this approach uh, is something that is really, really helpful. And it freed me up to realize that if the thing I love doing is making art, and I don't like taking photographs as much of it, or I don't like cleaning up the studio, or I don't like um, stretching five canvases as much as I do painting on them, that's the first area to get someone to help you do it. So now, what's so cool about this is that you're putting specific information down, you're marking it, you're creating not a, an elusive feeling, but you're actually creating data that you can track. So you get these data points and that's just where you are now. This is all about just really taking a measurement of where you are right now. If you're just starting out and you, you're never selling anything, well, it'd be awesome for you to sell one thing. That would be incredible. If you are got going and you sell a couple, track it. You wanna put this idea, if this is something you want, front and center and tracking this, having a little spreadsheet, writing down your hours, you will, it'll show you like, you know, it's pretty powerful to see how many hours you put into something. You know, it's, this is, this is, it's making it a bigger part of your life by recording it, right? But Vicki had this question and when I said, you know, you'll get better at doing this, she goes, what do you mean? Art gets better over time, therefore you sell more. What's better even mean these days? So here's the thing, um, Vicki, and I, I get where you're going with that question, um, but what this means is that when anybody makes something, I don't care what kind of art you're doing, I don't care what you're doing, generally you improve as you do it. You just do, you get better. You actually don't even have to be thinking about it, just doing it a second time, a third time, a fourth time, it gets better, you get more relaxed, it gets, you know, and yes, you're gonna have some dud days, it kind of goes up and down, but generally, it gets better, it improves. You will like the results more over time, you will get more efficient over time, especially if you're paying attention and searching for information, this podcast being a great, place to start on how to do this, how to get this monetary thing going for your, for your work. So, and better is completely subjective, but everything that is important that I talk about is better according to you. If you put down five paintings, you know which one's better and most people will agree with you. And it's, it's, it's totally subjective, right? But it's not like, you know, the world is not like, it's just completely subjective. People will buy this, they'll buy that, nobody cares. 
great work sells. And, and I, I'm a great believer in this because if it, you know, it's, it's not totally random. I know we see all these stories, people spend $10 million for, you know, a plastic thing or what. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about powerful work that you've made, that you care about. The more of you you can put in it, the more different it can become, um, the, more, the more universally, generally, it will be to other people who are looking to feel more alive in their life, to feel things that they haven't experienced before. And that's your work. So the clearer you can become, the more you can pay attention to what you love and don't love, that's what starts making more powerful art. And whether you're just starting out or whether you're in this you know, three months now, look at the work you've made. And there's clues in there about what, um, of your better work. And you already know it. You can see it and you can feel it. And most of the world will agree with you. So that, that was sort of the idea. And there was some interesting questions that I got as a result of this. So I thought I would just do this little episode about, about this subject, right? So there was a Driftwood Gallery said, how do you account for art that sells well after the six month period? For example, I make 10 paintings in six months, not real numbers, but easy to work with. During those six months, I sell five paintings, but three of them I completely, that I complete, and then I sell later. And then one of the paintings I created in six months period sells two, two years later. So it's not a perfect science, but just give yourself enough time to when you can kind of assess it. There is a number, a rough number. And, you know, for me, it was, I think it was um, when I started doing this, I was able to sell six out of 10 things. And it was kind of amazing. It was like actually really lucrative for me. You know, I started doing it way too late. I wish I had started earlier. In the beginning, I hardly sold anything, but no one even knew that I was selling anything. I didn't have an Instagram account. I wasn't sending things out. I didn't have any galleries, you know. It was only when I started showing people my work that I started um, selling, selling things. So, um, so it's just a real rough number. There was a great comment here. Um, from B, B. Hale Art, um, she said, oh my God, so interesting. My husband was a landscaper and a stonemason and always worked by the hour. Um, he's always asking me how many hours a painting takes me and I just have no sense of that. But okay, I will pay attention to this because it is where I really go weak in the knees, pricing these pieces of my life. Thanks for all you share, Nick. It's awesome knowing you are here. So here's the thing, and this is great. It just brings up this point. Um, this, is, this conversation is just for practical, real life, getting stuff done conversation. Your art is priceless. Your art is the most important thing in your life that you make, perhaps. I think it is the most worthwhile thing to do. There's only one of them that will be ever made, right? The conversation to, to talk about the value of your art is a different, is kind of different, right? We need to value the hell out of our art. We need to, but we need to value our time as well. And they kind of go hand in hand. So this is, this is about valuing our time and really valuing it. And if you can make the work, the art of your life, why, and you can pay someone $25 an hour to do some of the more mundane things that aren't that, you need to value your time enough to say, hey, I'm not gonna spend my three precious hours on Sunday doing that. I'm gonna move that three hours over into the column of art making, of making my art, because it's so important. Embedded in what we're talking about today is self-worth and, and, and evaluation. The thing of going weak in the knees, it's because we're vulnerable, right? We're vulnerable. We all fear that, you know, with the things we make and we're trying to do this thing, we put it out on the internet and maybe someone doesn't like it and we're crushing it, it crushes us because we care so much. It's really who we are. That's what we're trying to show and express. So saying it's worth, I'm getting this much an hour to do it, feels clinical, it feels cold. But the, the, the reason that we wanna do this is so you get to do it more. And then you're gonna notice that th these numbers are gonna start going up. I mean, it gets better and better and better. I mean, learning how to make things that you love. 
and how to monetize it and how to, so you can make more things you love because that's the whole point. That's your gift. Your gift is to put these things out in the world. That's why you're here. And your art is, is massive and, and so, so important. So don't think of this as clinical. Don't think of it's like, oh, my work is only, you know, I mean, I remember when I uh, started teaching workshops, I just wanted, I wanted to go and teach them in these, well, it was Esalen, which was a, is a retreat center on the California coast. And it's so cool there, there's hot springs and I can never afford to go there. Um, but you know, they got all this amazing food and the hot springs and the stars, the whole thing is in these organic gardens, so beautiful. I, all, I just wanted to always go there and I couldn't. And I heard that if I taught something, um, if I did a little course, I could go for free <laughs> and you know, get a couple of people to, to take the course and they'd let me go for free, which I ended up doing. And much of that approach is, is what I'm teaching today. But, you know, going, like getting anything, doing something where you're, you're actually monetizing it and you love doing it, it's such a win. So don't, don't get caught in the, in the, in the typical, thinking that by saying you're only making this much an hour, that's what you're worth. Now that's just the, that's just the, the it has a more of a reflection of the container you have yourself in right now. You, you don't have a lot of outlets for, for your artwork. You don't, you haven't, you're just getting going, right? And if you've never shown your work, if you don't post it, of course you won't sell it, right? So th there's that as well. There was a question here that sort of relates to this. Bonnie was saying, Yikes, I'd get really depressed if I did this. I paint really slow and have limited opportunities to show. Doubt it I'd, it I'd ever even make a minimum wage. So I wanna just highlight here, um, we have to hold ourselves in, in the highest regard. The language we use to talk about ourselves, right? Minimum wage, I wouldn't even make minimum wage. The feeling of this, Bonnie, is like your work, your work and you is priceless. You're as important and as meaningful as Picasso. We have to, we have to get this in our head because this is this self-worth piece is the barrier really underneath all of this. And, and what I brought up was kind of triggering for people, right? Like, I mean, I get it. You know, it takes you a long time to make art. And so your thinking is that. This is impossible for you. This is an impossibility. But I, but you want to think of, like you're a creative person, and you you got to think about these challenges, these problems, more as riddles, as puzzles to fig, fig, to figure out. Um, there's absolutely a way that you can, if if you love spending a long time making the art, that's awesome. But maybe you don't want to spend so much time making art. I mean, I used to just labor forever on paintings, but it was really because I didn't I didn't really know so much, and I and I wasn't confident, and I would change things. I'd do like ten paintings on one. And what helped me was getting coaching, learning from people how to do this, starting to understand principles. So like I knew how to fix things instead of just like blindly walking around, wandering, hoping that something would occur that was different and interesting. And, but really what I was doing was I was just working really hard and then sometimes it would work out. It was more luck, luck of the draw, you know? And um, that's an exhausting way to work. So um, go ahead and do this, right? But the bigger question is, do you love what you're making? Do you love the process of what you're doing? Do you want to sell your work? Is that important to you? All these things need to be factored in. You know, like I, I used to spend a lot of time um, uh, creating sketches and comps of my work so I knew what it was going to look like so I could, I could get to the outcome faster and I would feel more confident because I knew where I was going. And it just was so boring in the end, I stopped doing it, but I needed that for that period of time, right? I thought I did. So now I don't do that at all because I just love the excitement of not knowing. I don't even think about it, I just go make art. So um, so that's the question I want to have for all of you guys listening. You know, what? How do you want this practice to go? 
You know, you know, you get to change it any way you want. You have absolute freedom to make any kind of art you want. That's why it's art. It's not like you've got to make a widget and it's got to take this long and this many hours. My friend Adam Wolpert, you know, he spends like two months on a painting and, you know, it kills me. I mean, he has this little tiny brush and he does all these branches on these trees and they're incredible paintings, but he loves it. He loves just drop. He listens to his Japanese like Zen music and he just paints these oak trees and he just does it day in and day out. And he loves it. But for anyone here, like you get to change this. To, to, you want it to reflect who you are and, and where you want to go with this. Hey, we're going to do a quick break away for a minute to tell you about something very cool that is coming up uh, for you from Art to Life. It's called the Breadcrumbs Challenge. It happens on September 9th and 10th, and it's totally free. The Breadcrumbs Challenge is a fabulous art-making community-wide event that is 100% online. It'll help you rediscover what brings you alive. It recalibrates you to the kind of art only you can make. It's all about getting your heart, mind, and soul all heading in one direction. And when that happens, your art and life get really, really good. Anyway, it's going to be so fantastic, but you have to pre-enroll by going to breadcrumbschallenge.com. We also have links in the show notes. So, um, so go and get all signed up. It's going to be so, so good. All right, let's get back to our show. So Edwin said, this seems to me a very clinical approach. What about the time sitting in front of your work doing nothing? Well, that you factor that in. Right, just factor it all in. Um, obviously, when somebody buys your painting or the thing you've made and they say, well, that seems kind of expensive. And it's like, well, I've done this my whole life. In my case, I've made art my whole life. So I might make the thing that I'm supposed to be working on in front of me right now, um, this painting, and I haven't worked that long on it, but I've made art my whole life. So I can get to results quicker. So when someone buys a painting, they're buying all that experience, right? So, um, so it's not a clinical approach, but you need data. You need an actual data point. So it, it helps you, right? It's like, it's not kind of, it's sort of good. You'll know, like I, last year I sold two out of every 10 paintings. This year I'm selling four. That's amazing. That is so hopeful. That gives you so much momentum. Okay, so I just think that's really important to kind of understand. And again, Isabella is saying, do we also count the hours spent on random sketching we may or may not use in our paintings later? Do we add taking photos and adjusting them on the computer? Is it sometimes tricky when colors don't match the real ones and it takes time too? Well, see here, this is the thing, right? Like getting to what you love, like when you start out making art um, and you're interested in art, and you make something, you can imagine and you look around you and see things you love. That's usually why you come into art, you've seen something and you look what you've made and then you look at what somebody else, they call it the gap between what somebody else has done that you love and where your art is and that you don't love. And when in the beginning, that gap is really big and, and deep, it's like the Grand Canyon and it's kind of depressing. But slowly, if you just do another one, and do another one and another one, you start bridging that gap and you get closer and closer and it gets more and more fun and more and more exciting because you start liking the thing you're making more and more. But it takes longer, right? It takes longer, but just get a, grab hold of it. You know, you want, you want this, you want, you'll want to know a year from now where you were now, warts and all, like just do it, just get, get a sense of that, you know? And even if you spent, even if you could buy back three hours a week. What if you could paint three extra hours a week? Just think of, think of how great that would be. What if you could use that three hours for reading books about art or going to museums or anything that gets you inspired, doing things that inspire you? What if you had three hours a week just to do inspiring things and you bought that back? That is, that's what's at stake here. You're, the, the, the momentum of your art and, and where you're going it, you need to, to like have support in it. We, we think we're just these lone wolves that are by ourselves and we've got to be just making everything ourselves, doing everything and, and the whole starving artist mentality. There's so much of that. And, and I, I just, 
I just did it for way too long. I just did it for way too long. And there's so much great information out there and there's so many people that can help and there's so much you can look at and so much inspiration that this could be really fun, right? And so for me, the biggest thing for sure that I've ever done to help my art is having someone help me a little bit. That's what changed it for me. That's what made it possible. I took my art more seriously because if you buy, if you spend twenty five dollars to get a couple an hour back, and you, you know you maybe spend a hundred dollars a week, you, you get four hours that you bought back. You won't waste them. You'll use them because they're they're you spend twenty five dollars on them, right? So, so I just encourage this. I think it's a, a really great um, a really great way to to kind of get your arms around what you're making um, and how and how to do this. Um, so there was a comment here from Maria, um, and, and there's a lot of resistance to this, right? And this is what's so interesting to me. You know, we're fine talking about you know how much you get paid for doing a regular job or something else, but when it comes to art, it, there's all kinds of bugaboos around it, and it's like, man, there is nothing wrong with making money from your art, wanting as much money as you can, because for us, it's freedom. I have no, I, everything I want as much money as I can. And it's because it gives me freedom. It allows me to make the things that I'm here on the earth to make. And I wanna make more of them as fast as I can. That's my big, biggest thing that I can do. And that's why I'm here, you know, and I know I'm preaching to the converted. Um, but here's, a, here's another kind of interesting perspective and there's resistance, right? Maria says, I understand what you're saying, but for an emergent artist that does not work, um, does does not work because you just don't sell. Also, depends a lot where you live in this planet. All markets are different. Some paintings take much longer than others, depending on the medium. For you, as well as established painter, I believe it works well, though. Thanks for sharing. So, it's so again the 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 language, right? Um, uh, work that emerging artists work don't sell. It's not it has anything to do with emerging or not emerging. This has to do with making work that you love, that making work that feels like you um, and learning how to do that. I've seen people work six months and just tear it up. And then I know people that have worked 10 years and they haven't even, they don't even have the confidence to show their work. It has nothing to do with that, right? It doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with that. And as far as different markets, I'm talking about putting work out in the world via social, putting something on Instagram. Everyone, there's markets all over the place. Um, so it's not like, you know, put them in, put them in the, necessarily in the coffee shop and then th those are the people that are gonna buy the work. It's people, yes, you, your neighbor might buy one, but you probably sell another person to, in Europe or somebody over here. You just need to be like putting it out there in the world. Um, and yeah, some paintings take much longer than others. And um, all depends on the medium. As long as you love what you're doing, the most important thing is that you love what you're doing. But don't feel poor me, if, oh, my, my medium, my the thing that I'm making, it just takes so long and I, oh, I'm just gonna get minimum wage. I, won't, I don't even wanna look at it. And I'm just, you know, change it. What do you want? You know, do you, do you wanna make art quicker? Do you love that? Or do you want to just like, whatever it is, it shouldn't be taking your energy away, right? It shouldn't be depressing. If you spend 50 hours making a painting and love it, that's awesome, right? Make it so friggin' good that you can sell it for more, you know? And, and generally, you know, people can feel the time and energy put into something. It comes through, all that energy, it comes through when somebody looks at it. So often that kind of work, work that's layered, work that you've come back to repeatedly, um, has, has a greater likelihood of selling, of, of people feel the value in it. And why is that? Because it moves them. It gives them something to think about. They look at it. It's, it's, a, it's a deeper groove, right? And so people can, can connect into it more. Um, so this was really effective for me when I was just like, I didn't even have galleries. It was just, it's what, how I was able to kind of get things going. I want to talk a little bit of, about, um, the things we do, the hours we spend that aren't 
you know, making the art, right? When we're physically making the art. I kind of separate, it's like when I go in and I put my headphones on and I'm actually working on the canvas, that's the time that I'm spending and that's, I'm making the art. But did I think about it when I got up? Did it remind me when I'm making oatmeal of my painting? Uh, am I talking to people? Am I thinking, I'm thinking about it all the time. And you should too, like think about like, what it is that's lighting you up, the colors you want to use. I go on runs and I see things and I'm, you know, getting, getting it going um, all the time. It's your, your, your perspective, your approach to life is an artful approach. So yeah, I don't know how, you're not going to be able to like monetize your entire life, but you know, if you're out having an ice cream with a friend and you're gassing on all the colors in the ice cream store of the ice cream, that's not really what I'm talking about. Totally do it, take pictures, get lit up, but you know, keep, keep the hours to, towards the thing when you're making the thing, just so you can kind of track it. Um, it is an approach and, and anything, like the thing that I see that is challenging for artists is, the, is or the limiting thing is, is, is their um, valuation on their time. Um, we, we need to start valuing our time. It's the most valuable thing we have because it has the potential for us to make the thing that we're here to make. And it just makes all the difference in the world. Gaining a couple hours is massive and will change the whole feeling of your week. I hope that was helpful, you guys. It's, it's a really interesting subject, this idea of selling work, of putting a monetary number price on it, thinking of yourself for just temporarily, like what I'm making per hour. Um, you have to hold both. You gotta, you're in the real world, but then you're also, you gotta be idealistic and put everything into this amazing work you're making and value it accordingly as soon as you can, right? As soon as you start selling work, you start selling six, seven, eight paintings out of 10, you get to raise the prices. This thing just gets bigger and better and you get more freedom. More freedom translates to better life, better art, more sales. And that's what we're after here. We're after unlocking you. Even just an hour a week will make a giant difference. Anyway, you guys, I hope this was helpful. Um, I love talking about this stuff. This is the things that have worked for me. And um, we have a little uh, tab, yellow tab on the Art to Life website. If you go to podcasts, it's on the right-hand side. And it says, ask me a question or leave a comment. I know there's a lot of um, challenges and questions around this subject. So if you wanna go there and leave a question, I read them all. I might do a follow-up episode to this. Um, so go ahead and do that. Okay, you guys, thanks so much for being here. Okay, 